Good afternoon. Welcome. I'm Norton Owen. I'm director of preservation here. And I want to welcome you to this talk entitled Envisioning a New Theater. Before we get started, I just want to alert you, uh, all of the talk that will be happening tomorrow at the same time, right here, entitled Dancerly Intelligences, moderated by Sydney Skybetter, with three artists who are working at the intersection of dance and technology, Grisha Coleman, Katie Kwan, and Andrew Schneider. The brief background uh, to our talk today uh, for anyone who may not know, is to remind us all that a fire of undetermined origin destroyed the Pelos Doris Duke Theater in November 2020. Uh, there was never any doubt that we would rebuild as soon as we could. Ever since, we've been engaged in a marathon of surveying, strategizing, planning, and fundraising, and our guest today is a central figure in the next phase of Jacob's Pillow's evolution. Francine Huben is the founding partner and creative director of Meccanu Architects, based in Delft, the Netherlands. She was selected through a very rigorous selection process that considered proposals from throughout the world. And as you can see from the displays around the space here, uh, that she has already been hard at work, uh, conceptualizing a brand new theater for Jacob's Pillow, which we're happy to say will also be known as the Doris Duke Theater. There's a lot more that I could share about Francine's background and her firm, which employs creative professionals from 25 countries, but I'm anxious to begin the conversation so that you can hear directly from this extraordinary individual. So I hope you'll join me in welcoming Francine Huben. You know, first, I know that Meccanu is involved in projects all around the world, including, including massive buildings uh, that, with budgets that are many times the size of ours. What was it that made you think that a project like this was something that you wanted to take on? Um, yeah, it's also very much based on intuition. First of all, we've done more theaters. So to be honest, I know we know how to design theaters, small ones, big ones. Um, and I really like the East Coast of the United States. <laughs> and when it came up, uh, and also there was the unique thing, because we, for instance, we also did, did the New York Public Library. Have you been there? Uh, the the, the, the Mid-Manhattan one and the Central Library. And also in Washington, I've done a building in Boston. And uh, the Bruce Balling Building. And uh, yeah, I like it here very much. And I, I also there was a coincidence, because it was the pandemic. But I had, um, and we could not travel, but I had a special visa because the United States needed me for the New York Public Library. So I could travel in a very empty plane uh, with my daughter, who is also working at uh, Meccano. So I but, I but I only go and try to get a work if I go, can go there. So we went there, we, rented, we went to New York, we rented a car, drove all the way here, spent here two days, went to this amazing theater. The, the outdoor theater, mm. big fan of that. And yeah, and I like it very much because the, I also said that uh, I like, uh, what, what I think is the best in the United States are the state parks and the national parks. And it felt for me a little bit like this here. Uh, and also I have I've been camping many years in, 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 in the United States, but also like now three years ago, I was camping with my extended family in the Hudson Valley. And here I felt, you know, I felt very pleasant here. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit stupid, but... Uh, no, not so, at But, this. you know, I, I, what for <laughs> me is essential, you know, as I told you, I know how to design with, with the Meccano team and, of course, with our consultants, we know how to design a theater. But I wanted to know how can I make a special theater here for the pillow? And that's, I really wanted to feel it and experience it. And of course, listen to the history of um, Ted Sean, his philosophy, and of course, the philosophy of Pam, how she wants to make, mm -hmm. be prepared for the future. But also, what was very essential for Pam was also the indig indigenous um, mm -hmm. background. And I liked the whole indigenous philo philosophy. It was also explained by us by Jeffrey Gibson. Gibson. Mm -hmm. Um, but we were also, because we also do a project in Toronto, that was also 
kind of indigenous already, but this was much more from the beginning, and I really liked that. Well, I want to, so, so talking about the very beginning, I don't want to go too far beyond that at the moment because we have plenty of time to talk here. Uh, but I just wanted, uh, so in that first visit, um, it sounds like you really, you wanted to have that first visit before you really want, determined whether you would throw your hat in the ring or, or had you already decided uh, at that point that you would... Um, no, that's part of it yeah. because that doesn't make sense for me if I've not been it. I uh -huh. want to feel it with all my senses, right? And uh, so th that's what I did, and I had that opportunity. Yeah. So, so I wonder if you could take take us all back to that first time and into your impressions of what what were some of the things? I mean, you you've said uh, a little bit in um, in passing about them, but I I really want to hear, particularly for somebody who is so attuned to place and um, and and to the built environment, what. What were those initial impressions when you came here? Uh, of course, that it feels like a village. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think at that time, it was already a pandemic. I think I could see a show in the open air On theater. On the outside stage. And I thought, mm -hmm. you, oh, you re already have the best theater in the world. Just this <laughs> flat thing and with the open air and on the mountain. I think it's amazing. But of course, that's not enough. <laughs> we, want, we want to have something for the four seasons. Right. And I also had to learn what was the meaning um, of this theater. Mm -hmm. What will be, uh, yeah, not like an open air theater. <laughs> so right. that was for me very important. And I, as I told you, I, I really liked it here. I, 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 and I also, today I went to the tour with uh, Adam. <laughs> yes, the uh, Jacob's Garden. Jacob's yes. Garden. And I thought it was so nice that you explained that also the philosophy of Ted Sean was very much linked to the landscape here. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm also such a person, so I really to ground it. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, and I, I, I really did love the, the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It sounds like the, that the place really spoke to you in a yeah. way and that you immediately felt at home. Yeah. I, I think that's a feeling that uh, even looking around at some of the faces here, I see nodding heads. Um, you know, um, many people feel that way. I, I wonder if, particularly as a design professional, uh, what is your philosophy of what creates that feeling? How is it that this space has that? And and because I would imagine that as you, in your work, that becomes something that is part of your work. How can I how can I give a building? Uh, how can it have a sense of place? And there's already a sense of place for Jacob's Pillow as a whole. Yeah, but uh, but I think what I always also look, I observe the trees mm -hmm. because in a way trees are grounded. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's really uh, if you if uh, uh, as you told, I'm working all over the world, not yeah. all not everywhere, but also in, <laughs> no, yeah, also in no, Europe, in Taiwan, Antarctica. And, uh, yeah. no, no, Antarctica. No, 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 Antarctica. Yeah. But, yeah, okay. But I always observe. Yeah, maybe a little bit stupid for you, but I observe the trees. Yeah, because the trees tells me something about the soil, and I'm really also this. In a way, also this idea of um, indigenous thinking is, has very much to, to deal with the soil. Mm -hmm. And the trees come up, so the trees are here are different than, for instance, in Taiwan, what is a subtropical city, or they are different, uh, kind of even different from the Netherlands, mm -hmm. because this is a little bit more north. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I, I do observe that, and I, for me, it was very interesting to get uh, known, by, um, to get uh, in touch with uh, <laughs> Jeffrey Gibson. Mm -hmm. Because um, Pam asked that we should involve an indigenous artist yes. in our team. So we were also really researching who should we have in our team. And so you were the one, sorry to interrupt, but you were the ones who made that selection yeah. of Jeffrey Gibson. Yeah, we did that. So we did some research and I think... Uh, and of course, I have a kind of network because I work in the United States already, I think, for 15 years. So we, I have a kind of network. So we, I was, we were really trying who should fit the best and who also has the time to be, be part of it and also to be open-minded. Because I think the unique thing, what Pam asked, is to have an indigenous artist from the beginning mm. as, as a design process. Because as I told you, we did, did also a project in Toronto. And often then the indigenous thing becomes at the end. 
it's an add-on rather yeah, than... Yeah, and then you yeah. do it in the landscape or, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not from the beginning. Mm. And I think the, the, also the talk we had with him, and that was even, I think, most of the time online <laughs> at that time, mm -hmm. uh, was for me very interesting. But even that was for me almost like coming home, to be honest, because I, in my whole philosophy, I work already for 40 years, it's very much based on the senses, it's on the soil, uh, mm. um, dealing with the sun and the light, so, and that's what he also said, it's about, you know, north, east, south, west, but that has to deal with the, the sun, it has to deal with, what, what does that mean, the, the early morning, morning sun, or what is with the wind? What I really did like, what he did express, and that was something new for me, that we're all equal. A tree, mm. a p person, an animal, we are all equal. Mm. That's what I really did like as a philosophy, especially also nowadays with this whole thing, what's happening with the planet. Yes. What makes it even more important. And also the whole discussion about sustainability. Um, maybe as I can tell you that we in Europe are a little bit, or especially in the Netherlands, we are more ahead with sustainability, oh, but... We will concede that, yes, okay, but, absolutely, yeah. But what is so interesting also in the whole indigenous thinking, uh, and that we also that we did in Toronto, is thinking of in seven generations. Mm. It's of course, it's more symbolic, but in a way thinking of sustainability is thinking of the giving, uh, giving it to the next generation and to the next generation. So, so this whole thinking of uh, Jeffrey, that what he explained uh, to us as a starting point for, for my, also for the client and for us, you know, what are the values? I, I was not really designing with us, but it was m much more thinking what are the values we should um, uh, yeah, take in our design. Mm. Also that we said we didn't want to be, because most of these buildings are kind of rectangular. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you call it always colonial more. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we really want it to be also a little bit more organic. So you see it, it has the round corners, it is dealing with these four uh, directions, um, with the daylight and uh, even with the wind. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, let us just say, we have something quite obvious sitting right between us here, the, the scale model of the, of the building along with its top, which is sitting down here so that we can see inside of it. But I wonder if, um, if there are some things about, uh, as you were just talking about those indigenous values, if there are things that are, um, that you can comment on in the design that, that came from that way of thinking. Yeah, in a way, what I just explained, um, so that's how, for instance, we have green roofs, we have, mm. uh, in the east, we have the uh, the fire pit and the medical garden. Um, these are, of course, little things This that we keep it, in a way, I also like that already before, these soft corners. I think yes. uh, also what is, for me, maybe also typical, um, the Berkshires. I really wanted to create verandas because when I was here, I really did like to sit on the verandas mm -hmm. and we really had to fight for them because we had also had the value engineering thing, of course, but I think it's so crucial. Also like yes. we're sitting here. So you know? all of this uh, is veranda. If I, is veranda. Uh, half of it, almost half of the um, surroundings of it, more than half, it looks yeah, like. Especially facing the south and the west. Mm -hmm. Uh, because here um, it's also that here it's more nature, uh, east and north is more nature, but also in here is more the kind of back of house, I would call it. So we really, uh, we had to make choices, mm -hmm. we could not make it everywhere, but so this is, re but it also makes it logic, so south and west, because we, we expect that most of the time, uh, of course, when there are, uh, when there's audience, it will be used in that time zone. A time zone is not the right word. But in uh, that, the season. The, yeah, the season, but also in that um, afternoon, evening. Oh, at the time of day. Yeah, uh -huh. but the time of day, yes. Mm -hmm. But also, we have to be aware, what we did design is is for four seasons. Mm -hmm. So it's winterproof, mm -hmm. summerproof. <laughs> <laughs> um, rainproof. Yeah, um, good. So it's really the idea that that Pam wants to attract what's already happening here, workshops. Yes. Um, it's a maker space. Um, so then they can even have a nice green room where you can cook. Uh, so it's it's a whole, almost a kind of dance house. Mm. Uh, I, uh, 
Well, it's the it's the support areas, right, that are so much more um, so much more extensive than what were in the previous Duke. Yeah. So, the, so if you can compare it, I don't know who, who knows the previous Duke, the old Duke. Yeah, Most various po folks here. Okay, a, lot, the, a lot of people know the, the old Duke. The theater itself, hey, what is this? This is a retractable seating. It's a flat Which you can, <laughs> And you can hold it in your hand. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But this is uh, kind of a little bit bigger and no columns in it. Mm -hmm. uh, similar size as the Doris Duke Theater. So the theater space itself will be similar to what S we need. Size knew. wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we don't have a pitched roof. We really have a a roof that is flat. It has um, what I think is very crucial is that for we are in a remote area, and uh, so that especially also maybe not during the festival but the other months that you can deal with the theater. Maybe just one technical person can mm, deal with it. Right. So we have catwalks. We have we've been working together with Charcoal Blue and with Marvel uh, as a local architect. Uh, so to make it also very pragmatic um, that you can handle this magic box by one person. Yes. Um, but that's essential. And it has even elevators. So um, in it, one elevator, it's, n it's for the audience. If they want to sit, right, the elevator's here. But if they want to go up, they can sit here. That you don't know always have to sit if you're in a wheelchair down. So, so uh, an audience member, if they're using a wheelchair, doesn't have to be on the ground level. They can take the elevator. Yeah, they can and also be go up. here, mm -hmm. but it's also for uh, if there's handicapped staff. Yes. Because also on this on this level, the mezzanine level is also the audio room mm -hmm. where there's all the mechanical equipment, so you can sit there. But it also serves that if you have to bring up to the catwalks stuff. Uh, you can also use that elevator. Mm. It's all one. It's very clever. It's mm. all with one elevator. Yeah. So what you're alluding to here in terms of the work with Charcoal Blue. So Charcoal Blue is essentially a theater consultant, yeah. right? And so I imagine in you mentioned that you've worked with a number uh, that you've designed a number of other theaters. Do you always have a theater consultant that yeah. you work with? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and here with Charcoal Blue, we had done also a, a theater in in uh, in the UK in the Oh so you've worked with them before, before even, yeah not uh, with the uh, New York office but mm -hmm. with the London office and yeah there are some there are not that many theater consultants in the world so we most of them we know mm -hmm. and they also know each other yeah. <laughs> but it's it's crucial because you know good acoustics is crucial mm. uh, the whole theater technique um, Pam really wanted to be prepared for the future because that's also and she can tell yeah. much better about it than me but you know also what we learned during COVID during the pandemic um, also in the Netherlands that dance that we should really um, uh, take more um, uh, uh, tape it and send it out so, that oh, so ways uh, ways to make uh, online uh, yeah. aspects to to document and be able to uh, serve it beyond just the walls yeah. of the theater. And not just document it, yes. like what you're, right. what's your, yes. what's your response, yeah. but also to share it. To share right. it, Even yes. if you cannot make it to the to the, the pillow, mm -hmm. then you can see it even from Amsterdam. Right. Um, so that was crucial. But also yesterday we had this talk, and that will be also there tomorrow, what you said. Mm -hmm. You know, the, what is, I think, so interesting about dance it's maybe a little bit like architecture. It's about space. It's about co collaboration with music, with dance, with technical innovation. So this magic wooden box, I don't want to call it the black box, a magic wooden mm. box, mm -hmm. is prepared for that so that you can play with it. But it will be, I hope it will be a beautiful, nice space. And also this is, you can open these big sliding doors and mm -hmm. it goes to mm -hmm. west and to east, west and east. Um, yeah, that you can play with it. Yeah. You mentioned the, um, well, by calling it a wooden box. Um, I wonder if you would talk a little bit about wood, because I know that, that it plays a central role in a lot of your design uh, work. So, so how does wood figure into this particular design? Yeah. I, I don't have to tell here at the pillow that you want to make a wooden theater <laughs> <laughs> so the, because that's your tradition. But but in a way, it's also so interesting because nowadays to build in wood is much more sustainable. Um, 
but also getting more expensive because now everybody wants to do it. Mm -hmm. But it's so interesting because it's a material, uh, we, we will use cross laminated timber in the inside and the whole construction. But it's nice because in, in a way, yeah, you have the example here, you don't have cross laminated timber, yeah. but in a way it gets you already in the atmosphere. And of course, you still have to think of acoustics. It's, uh, if you, uh, so we really had to deal also with the acoustics of it. But it, get, it gives you an atmosphere. It, can, you, it gives you, I think, a place that you can touch or you can even hang things or you can put mm. screw. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's also for the artist extremely important that it's not a building. It should be beautiful. But the aesthetic should not be so dominant that you don't feel you can play with it. Mm -hmm. so is that the right yeah. feeling? Yeah, uh, that it's practical. And yeah, practical and beautiful, and yeah, that you can decide, hey, I want to hang something here. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. And I think uh, that's what I feel also what we did together with uh, Charcoal Blue. You know, that, you know, the technique and everything, what will be in there, it will be... I always it said it should not be a theater like in Brooklyn. Eh? Yes. But that was more talking about the atmosphere. But we have to be aware that what people prepare here should then travel all over the world. It could go to a theater in Brooklyn after yeah, and, this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, right. Um, so that uh, so we have I think very good theater technique in the in the building in the new building. So I wonder, you know, talking about wood as you do, and so uh, in a way, you know, it's such a uh, elemental kind of thing. But is that it? How, how does that factor in with the technological aspects of this theater? I mean, are do you see those as in opposition in any way? That no. that wood is okay. Yeah. No, it's to and also. I don't know if I should mention that, but it was the coincidence that I be, did build with my husband in the Netherlands a small non-profit theater by, uh, 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 founded by ourselves, but especially by with my husband, but also was a totally wooden theater. Okay. So there was this kind of coincidence that I did already build my own yeah. thing. Well, I'm glad you did that, that uh, uh, and uh, and investigation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I yeah. learned a lot. So I always say, I, I always said this, but I have my very small own Jacob's Pillow in my own, yeah. uh, <laughs> because I also have a, a kind of family house and where all people and friends come and where people this uh, dance, but um, more musicians and, mm -hmm. but also um, uh, it's a place for, I think that's for me important, it's a place for inspiration. Mm. Can be dance, can be other things happening there. I think even I said to Pam, you know, it even, it's even, it, I think it's a beautiful spot for even for uh, conferences, small conferences that you want to team building mm -hmm. here. So that space should be so flexible. Even you have the weddings uh, in some certain season. Well, I think on on the the rendering that is uh, behind you on on your left over here, uh, that shows the interior of yeah. the theater when it's opened up. When it's not being used like a black box, it's being used as yeah, that we see windows there and we can see uh, actually the the space opened up in a different way. Yeah, maybe to explain that drawing, mm -hmm. uh, of course we've we've been often in the Pearl Studio, but I think it's a, it's a beautiful space. Mm -hmm. But that's and that has a lot of daylight, and it's I, I love that space, beautiful. But of course we have a different goal. So, but we still made the four windows because often a theater is a really a black box that has no daylight. But people don't like it if you have to work there. So we have these four windows, also symbolizing the four uh, directions, mm, uh, north, okay. east, south, west. So there's the indigenous influence. Yeah, yeah again. and then also what you can see, that we, you see these kind of stripes, but that's, we did that for um, acoustic reasons. Okay. Um, but also we made rails that you can hang curtains if you want. So mm -hmm. you can play with the box uh, if you want, if you don't want, uh, uh, depending of course on the artists, what they want as a background, maybe they want a black curtain, or maybe they want, uh, uh, we expect to happen a lot with uh, multimedia. Mm -hmm. So you can even make the walls uh, hang, uh, flat them out with white, uh, big white screens or something like that. Uh, so it's like this playing with the magic box mm. uh, in the atmosphere. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Is it right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you've made so you've you've really designed it in a way too that is um, aside from the flexibility of being able to use it like that or to use it as a as a more of a theatrical space. But even when it's being used as a theatrical space, 
there's no one way that it can that it has to be used, right? You could do you could arrange the seating yeah, differently. Yeah. So this is this is retractable seating. So this is kind of the traditional way. Mm -hmm. It's about 225 seats, but you can of course then move it in. Mm -hmm. But then you can also make it a round theater. Mm -hmm. And I think what's also very crucial. So we uh, you can enter the official way. Then you enter it through here and here. Huh? What is mm -hmm. when it's like this? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that would be very similar to the way it was in the old Duke, that you, yeah. you're entering on either side of the yeah. seating platforms. But what mm -hmm. we do, I just I moved the, mm -hmm. can you see it, the sliding mm -hmm. doors? So then it's normal, traditional, mm -hmm. what, what is good. But you can also have this idea that, hey, maybe uh, we enter, the, the performer, the artist want you to enter through here, then we open up there the space and then there's maybe something happening here and we all go and leave from this side uh -huh. to the maybe to the fire pit or i can also imagine even if you have a traditional way or a traditional seating that maybe you, you want them to enter more here and of course from above maybe but maybe at the end of the show you open up like this and you see together because the, the sun will be from here because most of the performances will be in the afternoon or in the evening and then you look with the light to the the woods are here. Yeah. Or um, yeah, that's my idea that you can play with it, mm -hmm. or you can, yeah, or you can even have a performance like sitting here, and then you have as the backdrop you have not against the sun but with the sun. Right. You have here the woods, so it's it's a kind of I hope I have no clue if they will uh, use it like that, but it, that it gives inspiration to play with it. Well, from our experience here, I would imagine, yes, they will find every way that you've predetermined, <laughs> as well as a few that you haven't predetermined. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's the wonderful thing about a living space, is that it will continue to um, be experimented in, yeah. and that people find different ways. I particularly love that um, you know that the idea of opening to the outdoors is something that we have in the Ted Shawn yeah. Theater, and we also experienced that in the old Doris Duke Theater yeah. with those doors that opened yeah. at the back of the stage. So it's wonderful to see that idea um, present in this building yeah. as well. And yet it's present in a totally different way. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. yeah. But also, I think you can have here, uh, there's also space for you, huh? so you can have here. Thank you. Uh -huh, <laughs> right, yeah, okay. And this, what we said, this can be the pre-talks. Mm -hmm. But also, I th assume what I think is so nice, uh, because we had to decide together where should we position the theater. Should it be on the old plot or maybe another plot on the, uh, because mm. we have a big uh, campus here. But we said it's so logical to have it very close, that in between the Pearl th Theater, the, the Studio the Theater, Pearls. Uh -huh. and then the, the Green Field, with the, I, I love also the boulders here. Huh? Yes. The boulders. And then this, that it is almost that the space in between the theaters are also a theater. Yes. So maybe you will give a performance on our, even on top of our roof, maybe we should put uh -huh. the, the thing on top. You yeah. can even have a, a small performance on top of the roof, mm -hmm. and that we are sitting on the mm -hmm. grass field, on the, mm -hmm. on the meadow in between. Well, I'm going to so put the, building, the roof on. So the building itself is also kind of a stage, or maybe somebody's dancing in the veranda. Yeah, so the, to imagine here, yeah, this is now east side, so but this is the west side. Mm -hmm. So the, the Pearl Theater, the Studio Theater is over there. Mm -hmm. And it creates a kind of, yeah, thinking in communities is for me always very important. Mm -hmm. And it should be cozy. Mm -hmm. So you spoke about the green roof before. Yeah. Is that what what part of? It's this part. Yeah, okay. So uh, the lower part, not the not the uppermost part. Not but the, not yet. Not yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I also see. this uh -huh. one will be visible. Mm. Um, because if you have because it's sloping the side, and if you're coming um, nah, yeah, from there to you can see the roof. Mm. So we really wanted to make sure mm -hmm. uh, that this is green. Yeah, I think you can see that in the. The rendering yeah. that's up there, the aerial view, uh, you can see that a little bit to the to the left of the the highest part. Yeah. Uh, you can see the green part. Thank you for indicating, tall person. And of course, yes. that that <laughs> and that green again is important. Anyway, there's a lot of green already here. So, but it's also good for insulation. It's good for if it's mm. raining, the acoustics and. Uh, mm. Have you incorporated green roofs in other buildings? Yeah, many times already. Really. 
and and uh, successfully, yeah, yes, yes, not leaking. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But that also we have to solve together with this uh, construction company. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so b b b more, they're, they're just complications, I would imagine, or it's more, it, it's it's far more complicated than just making an asphalt roof. To make no. a green roof, no, no, no. no? not you, that much more complicated. No, the, you know, we we did our very first building already 25 years ago with a big green roof, the big library at the Technical University in Delft. We are quite famous for that one, and of course there were still lessons learned, but I assume there's now enough lessons learned. You've you've learned all those, yeah, yeah good. <laughs> and Excellent. also maybe yeah. good that we also made some whole daylight holes yes. in the green roof, so you get daylight in the green room, and in the. Um, in the uh, in the in the veranda the, in the in the, in the mm -hmm. lobby the quad yeah. lobby uh -huh. yeah the quad lobby quad. Mm -hmm. yeah, we call it the quad yes mm -hmm. I wonder so um, I'm not sure that people can see this from a distance but but the there are different levels sort of of the uh, of the wood siding it it looks like so is this something to do with the seven yeah yeah, yeah. could we, you we made, speak about that uh, we 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 are. Um, intrigued by the the seven the seven um, the generations so we, we made also in our because if we made it just all flat the wood we felt it, it's not sensitive enough so we started to think about you see I, you see these little ribbons they are different they are making dancing it's like music but if you count we have one two three four five six seven layers Symbolizing also the seven so generations. So that's that's again an indigenous yeah. it's uh, a little concept. detail, but also yeah. to make it a little bit more elegant. And for me, dancing is also very much about rhythm. It's mm -hmm. about um, also like music. So that's it's a, it's a little bit. You you should not take it too literally. Mm. But that's. Um, well, it sounds like the, the the well. It sounds and looks like the building dances in yeah. a way. Yeah. Yes. That's that's really a, a, a beautiful, that, uh, and, and then what about can you set, can you talk about I, the siding of the building? I think is, I mean, it's certainly something on a lot of the buildings that we have here is very distinctive. The board and batten siding that you have on these buildings, so we will see wood on the side yeah. of this building, right? I mean, we can see that in the. Um, in the rendering there on the far left, uh, that it. But it yeah. will be different wood than mm -hmm. you used here, even or in the, in yeah, here. even in the extension of the Ted Sean's theater, mm -hmm. because that's also what we learned with wood. There's always a little bit every year. It's different what is available or not, or what is. So we have a good wood. It will it will also get grays, get silver like this one, and uh, so the renders are still when it's not gray yet. So it will. I think it will mingle. It will weather, yeah. Yeah, but it will weather, but it also will mingle uh -huh. with the rest of the buildings. But I think the shape mm. is different. We don't have a pitched roof. That's also what I learned by the theater I made myself with mm -hmm. my husband, where we had to make a pitched roof. But in a way, nobody knows what to do in the pitched roof. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, for a theater, you want a flat... I have to also to create catwalks. You, you need a flat you space. Need, right. A flat ceiling. Mm -hmm. But it's elegant, I think. Yes, we think so too. And uh, also that, that all the functions, uh, because that's really, if you compare it to the old Duke, we have all these nice functions around it, uh, what is in the kind of the big veranda. Um, and they're all grounded and connected to the landscape. Mm. So that it's, I think it's very nice because I really, I really wanted everybody to, you know, it's rather remote. It's, it's, a, it's a journey to get here. It should, should be worthwhile. It should be a unique experience. You know, I go to the pillow yeah. or I go here for one week with my whole team and that's the best experience I can have. So that was really our uh, intention together. Well, I think that's something that everyone shares. I, again, I see lots of nodding heads because everybody knows that. It's not um, the easiest place to get to, right. but how wonderful that you've embraced that in a way and are are not um you're not fighting against that in a sense you are um working with that 
but I always said, and Pam will remember, I also want to camp here. You want to camp here, okay. <laughs> Maybe you can camp on the roof where it's uh, the, 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 green, the green roof. I, I have loads more questions here, but I really want to make sure that we have time to um, entertain any questions from those of you who are here. So, um, I, and I see a couple of hands already. Yes, sir, right in front. The question is um, whether the seating will be the same as what we had before. I have to check with Pam, but it's similar or a little bit, it's, it, it's 225. So yeah. depending on the configuration, we would go up to 400 seats um, and uh, starting from around 220, which is yeah. what it was before. Yeah. So the similar. retractable seating is for a right. certain amount. Particularly if you're holding it in your lap. Nobody, yes, <laughs> right, okay, nobody can sit there. And and yes, so a question about the snow load of uh, particularly the flat roof and whether that's accounted for. I'm sure it's accounted for. <laughs> 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 no, of course we had this discussion also, and of course we have a structural engineer, and uh, I will check again for you, but I'm sure <laughs> we had this discussion, yes. Yes, So and yes, right here in front. Uh, so a question about the landscaping in particular, and also the choice of the, choice of the, um, the plants that will be there, and whether that will account for the changing climate here, uh, yeah. well, here and everywhere in the world. Uh, yes, and I have to tell you that Marvel is our local architect, uh, Jonathan Marvel from New York. Uh, we have a very good, um, we work together in a very pleasant way. They are doing the landscape. Uh, and I will also make sure again that they are also responsible because in a way we, the, la the first two years we had the lead working with them. We expect to go uh, in construction from September, then they will have more the lead. But I'm sure we are very much aware of that. But I will double check with them. Yes, good. I think AJ, you had a question, or did I see? Did I, okay, you were you were uh, okay. Adding on, yes, right here in front. So, so uh, yeah, I think you're referring to that. I had mentioned uh, in my intro that that uh, Mekanu has uh, personnel from twenty representing twenty five different countries. Uh, on the staff. We so really a question in, just okay. in terms of, of who you're working with around the world and are those with different firms from around the world? And, yeah. and how, how does that work go with, a, you know, with Mar well, let's take Marvel as an example. Um, can you say more about uh, the collaboration that you have with yeah, them? Yeah, and maybe first what we try to do, because if we work international, we always have to find a local partner. And it's so logic because they are, you know, they're from here. So then you try to find the right one, what also fits for, for, for this thing. So we did find Jonathan Marvel because we said, hey, this is nice people for this scale. We go to the office. Is it the same culture? Uh, for instance, for the New York Public Library, um, I worked together with BBB, Bay of the Bill because that was a logic thing, but for, that's not a logic thing for this theater. So I, I try to find, we try to find the logic partner and we did find Marvel, Jonathan Marvel. We're extremely happy with them. And uh, we also asked them because we could do the landscaping ourselves. We also have landscapers in-house, but we said, no, it's more logical if they can do it because they're more nearby here. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and it's also kind of professional friendship. You have to inspire each other. You have to respect each other. Um, and working together, collaboration, like for such a project, then we will also, of course, with, uh, um, with Jacob Spillow and the whole team, you're working together four years, what is a short time, but it should also be inspirational and creative and pleasant yeah. and, of course, also critical to each other. Um, uh, well, it strikes me as interesting that in talking about that international collaboration yeah. that we're saying this uh, only a few footsteps away from our Welcoming the World exhibition in here, which speaks to, you know, the international influence here at the Pillow that we have enjoyed since our beginnings and how how really relevant it is that we're uh, 
welcoming the world in, in the design of this as well. Pam, did you have something to add or ask? So what Pam is adding is that Jonathan Marvel, marvelously enough, is from Pittsfield, Massachusetts, yeah. and that his firm also designed uh, St. Anne's Warehouse in Brooklyn, and uh, to speak of one other Brooklyn theater, and, yeah. uh, and, and that all of that expertise then comes with him and the firm to, into this project. Yeah which is wonderful, yes. So a question about the artist quad, which at least as the way it is indicated on the, on the plot plan there, um, seems to be almost as large as the theater. So what, yeah. is, the, what is the concept for that? Yeah, and, and uh, what's on that drawing is correct, I just want to say, <laughs> tell you. Eh? So it's, I mean, that's maybe this idea that we, we consider the quad as a kind of community space. It can even be, as I told you, uh, because it's really important to make um, a connection between the Pearl Studio Theatre and the new Duke. And that I could even imagine that we have a kind of performance like this outside, and if it's raining, we go inside. So it's, it, for me, it's really also kind of, for me personally, it's a kind of performance space. And I like the boulders there, and of course you have the tree that survived the fire, and it's, it's a nice, I, yeah. No, it's a nice space, I think. It's a nice mm -hmm. size. So we, we also, what was great, I think, together, we also did tape with a uh, uh, show on the plot, how big it will be. We, we could really test it. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that, you know, the... the um, uh, what we had there before in, in citing the Perlis studio where we did um, was already mm, sort of... In imagining that there would be this kind of space in that area, but of course then with the loss of the Duke, we lost one of the parameters of that space, yeah. and so I, I think it's lovely, I mean, you, you referred earlier to the fact that you looked at other sites on the grounds, but, but eventually came back to this that one, that this makes sense, and, and it's beautiful the way that that in, in in essence, honors that history of because, of course, if it if the theater didn't end up there, that idea of that um, quad would no longer exist in the same way. So, in a sense, by putting the theater there, it is restoring something that uh, that never quite had a because we only had what a year or so with a, a couple of years with the Perlis studio there yeah. before the fire happened. Yeah, and the Duke, of course, didn't have, was not foresighted orientation. The so old Duke, yeah. The old mm -hmm. Duke, so now mm -hmm. we have it really facing north. It's more to the woods, and that's more yeah. back of house, but east, west, and south, east, south, and west are people-oriented. Right. Yeah, so it will be much more so than it was before. I mean, we're yeah. really leaning into that idea of enlivening that space because it won't just be enlivened from another building being there, but a building that really relates to that space. Wonderful. Yes, sir. So this is a question about sustainability in terms of all of the uh, aspects that go into the theater and, and how those are being uh, considered. Maybe most important is that, as I explained to you, also this whole indigenous philosophy is for me already very sustainable and that we also wanted to have, um, because sometimes sustainability is just adding, adding technical stuff, putting solar panels on your roof or whatever. Uh, but no, we really wanted it uh, also uh, kind of, you can even cross-ventilate the building if you want. You can open up a window, you can, uh, it's well insulated. Um, the use of the, the wood and how we uh, add it with um, acoustic materials is first very important. And, um, and of course we have, I don't know exactly what is, uh, you will know better what we exactly have, what kind of uh, equipment, but it's, it's very also passive way of thinking of, uh, of um, because that's what I learned, eh? because as I told you, I, if I look in the United States, you put everything, enormous amount of air conditioning in, it takes enormous amount of money, also the energy co cost go bill is going up and up, and so we try to be, do it more in a European way, uh, what is much more also more using natural, and of course, if it's very hot, you can put the air conditioning on, don't worry, but... Um, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. I, 
I, Pam, I think you have something to add or ask. So I um, want to add just, I'm, I'm feeling for your voice, uh, that, yeah. that, uh, that we added um, the, a rainwater um, capture system and that also that it's all electric, uh, that all of the systems are electric in the theater for yeah. sustainability purposes. Good. Well, I think um, if there, I, I have a couple more things here and up my sleeve. Um, I wonder if there are, there, there, I think we talked about some of the things, the, the green roof, the, the, but I wonder if you could say more about the, there's a, uh, I think it's on this panel over here, the seating scramble. <laughs> which was which was something that came out of uh, it came also out of the indigenous um yeah and that's uh, of course outside in the yes. landscaping mm -hmm. and we want much more to use and to play with the the stones the mm -hmm. the, the boulders you can find here and that you can see sit there in an uh, in an informal way mm -hmm. and uh, so uh so that will you know that the, these outdoor aspects of the theater it's happening here yeah. so it's happening over yeah. there yeah so that that you see those even though they are outside um you are considering the the inside and outside yeah. of these theater uh, of the theater aspects yeah but at the same time as i t again uh, um, uh, marvel is taking care of the landscaping but we, we want to keep it rather simple mm -hmm. and basic um, and also we have been, uh, because it's also a sloping site, mm -hmm. it goes down the, this direction. Right. Uh, where we are bring it, where the, uh, here's also the, the place where the uh, truck can lo do the loading and unloading. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, to deal with the landscape and, and the high differences is very important. You know, one of the things that I... But, it, but it's not an urban way of designing the quad. Uh, right. So we really try to keep it very natural. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've been interested in, in the in as we've gone through the process with you is that you um, you know we have some structures that are not that far away from the new building. I mean, I'm thinking in particular about Holyrood, which was one of the uh, it was a housing cabin for us, not very distinguished in terms of its um, uh, design principles or whatever, but. You you've spoken out for these little um, yeah because I know for first they said let's demolish them but I say for me it's a little this, this village like things and they I use it and I don't know maybe you have to improve it uh, make it winterproof but you know keep it it's nice yeah. for this I, I like this whole atmosphere here so and, and, and you and you need it now yeah so but they need to be improved. <laughs> but you know, yeah, thank step you for that by too. Step. Yes, yes. And of course, that needs again fundraising, I assume, or whatever. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And and I know but, that. But there are also some spaces that are yeah. uh, some buildings that uh, also need a lot of improvement. Right, yes. right. Well, I think we'll be seeing them also. I mean, one of the things that is interesting about when you bring, put a new building into the midst and it changes the midst. I mean, it changes what is around it mm -hmm. and, and you're all of a sudden looking, suddenly you're looking at a different side of the building. Oh, nobody ever really looked at that side of the mm -hmm. building because you're always looking in a, in a different direction. So you see the back of Holyrood mm -hmm. instead of the front or whatever. Yeah. So, so yes, I see you're giving us challenges for the future too, yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's always challenges. <laughs> and there's always thinking of the future. Yeah. yeah. And speaking, oh, speaking of the, oh, there, yeah, the, it's retractable and also it's very yeah. resilient too. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. Um, the, the timeline uh, of this, I mean, I know a lot of this, of course, is in the hands of, of uh, the, the folks who will build it. But, yeah. um, but it's, it's, uh, it's looked at as basically a two-year yeah, I think okay. the, the idea is to start in September, groundbreaking, and I think that construction doesn't take that long. At a certain moment, it's there, but then mm -hmm. you need a lot of time to put in all the the the, the, the technical equipment. Mm -hmm. And I think, but Pam knows better that I think for the next festival we can use maybe a little bit already of the space, but just as a t more as a tent, and then 2025. 
Ta-da. Yes. Yeah. But of well, course, you need the testing, etc. Yeah. Hey, yeah. So that's, that's why you think, hey, can't, can't we do it in one year time? Yeah, maybe if we push it, but I think you have it really uh, well done. Yeah. Right. And, and you have to test it um, before you get a big audience. And, and, we, need, and, and we do, yeah, and yeah. we need some money still. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hint, yeah. hint, hint. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. So the question about uh, generator, since it, if it's all electric uh, and us being remote, um, uh, I'm I'm looking out here to Pam and yeah. AJ about yeah. that as well, and they're nodding yes. Yeah. So uh, we we will indeed have some way of making sure that the lights don't go out. Um, yeah. And on that note, I think that I, I certainly invite uh, folks to come up and look at the model in at close range to ask any other questions that you might have directly to Francine up here. And I want to just thank you so much for all that you are giving us <laughs> that you are bringing Pleasure. here. Thank you. Thank you.